Well, I think it's been about another week since uh, I unceremoniously ripped this uh, balance uh, circuit out, the BMS circuit. Uh, that didn't work and in fact completely flattened my 18650s and uh, they seem to have recovered quite well. Um, I'm not seeing any issues with any of these seven cells uh, connected to the uh, PWM led acid solar charge controller and as you can see they're all pretty well balanced here 3.99 volts or thereabouts each and every single cell um, so I'm pretty pleased with that but without realizing it initially there's a very good reason for that this capacity controller also has a balance function now it didn't mention it in the listing on eBay but if you uh, press and hold the type button, you get a double beep and it will then cycle through the various different cells and their voltages and all the time it's balancing them and it balances all the cells to the lowest cell value at all times, I believe. And uh, I noticed because it was getting a bit warm. And I wondered what was going on there. And then somebody did contact me. A commenter kindly mentioned that yes it does do balancing. And if I could dig out the manual again I might look through it again. But uh, like I said there's nothing on here that says it does balancing. And in the eBay auction it never mentioned balancing. But it does seem to be doing a pretty good job of balancing all these cells. So one thing you might notice is I have an extra wire here coming out of the charge controller and I've attached the other end of this cable to the solar MOSFETs because I was really interested to find out how this solar charge controller was charging these batteries and I think it's doing a reasonably good job of it. Let me get my oscilloscope. So first things first, I'm going to disconnect the solar charge controller to reset it again because this morning it's been charging quite happily. So let me reconnect it and boot it back up again. If I can get that wire in there. Because we need to see what's happening with the charging and, and what um, order it's doing things in and when it cuts off. So if I... These are going to be a bit tight, I'm afraid, but if we get some solar in here... There's the positive. And the negative. And we can see now it's showing that there's some solar, and so far uh, the solar's co um, got 40 volts on it because it's open circuit and there we are, it's turned on, bringing half an amp. Let me turn the oscilloscope back on and dim the lights a little bit so that we can see it. Okay, so under some lights here we can see that the solar panel is on, it's connected to the battery. Um, that's given me a constant line here, we're doing a bulk charge, the batteries are getting up to just over 4 volts each, 4.02 on average, and we're bringing half an amp, you can't quite see it there on screen but I can see that here, and they're up to 28.3 volts. Now at 28.4 volts we should go into absorb mode, and when it's doing absorb mode it's going to try and maintain 28.4 volts and the current will drop so at the moment we're getting as much current into these batteries as possible from the solar panels on the solar shed roof the MOSFET is on constantly the solar panels are effectively connected straight across the full seven cells here of these uh, lithium ion and this lithium ion pack but as we approach 28.4 volts in fact, if I take this out of balance mode, and we can see there, this is claiming 28.2, the solar charge controller is still saying 28.3. So I'm going to leave this running a little bit, hopefully in the next minute or so, at 28.4 volts, we should start to see 
the MOSFET switching on and switching off again to regulate that current. OK, so the cells are now up to 28.4 according to the solar charge controller and as you can see the solar panels are now being disconnected from the batteries via that MOSFET for a short period of time. And that's going to continue to increase to the point where it's off more than it's on and eventually it will get down to a point where it's on for a very short amount of time. So the current going into these batteries is reducing to maintain that 28.4 volts that the uh, solar charge controller is seeing. And now we've got to a point where the uh, solar panel is on for a lot less time than it is off. It's disconnected more than it is connected. And uh, it's difficult for you to see this, I know, in the background, but the uh, solar panel is delivering just 100 milliamps and actually it's showing a voltage of 37 volts because the voltage of the solar panel is allowed to creep higher because it's connected to the battery for less time and hopefully shortly we'll see the MOSFET go off entirely because we'll have completed the absorb phase and hopefully I'll be able to capture that on camera. And of course I have missed that moment but as you can see the solar panel is completely disconnected from the batteries now and uh, the batteries are at 28.2 volts here so uh, reasonably well charged. What's that? 4 volts per cell. So the solar charge controller is now in float mode and because the battery uh, voltage is above the float level there is absolutely no connection between the solar panels and the batteries so these are just being left to rest because obviously with a lead acid battery usually the voltage would drop down again and uh, get to that float voltage quite quickly and then again the solar charge controller would pulse width modulate to maintain the float voltage um, but I think the float voltage here is 13.8 times 2 so what's that 27.6 volts so we've got a little way to drop before we get into float mode and due to the fact that I'm not taking anything out of these batteries other than the power to uh, power the capacity controller and the charge controller itself. Mine doesn't ever seem to go into float mode because the batteries are only used at night and obviously once we get to night there's no voltage coming in from the solar panels. So what have we seen there on the solar charge controller? Well if we look at a charging graph here and we imagine the current is here now it's a slightly wavy line for a good reason because solar panels aren't going to be able to sustain a constant current all of the time. But we get to a point here where the current dropped away until it fell to nothing. And if we look at the voltage against that, the voltage was much lower and it rose and rose and rose until it got to a certain point our absorb level here where it flattened off and sustained that voltage so we can look at this and we can say well this is the bulk stage of a solar charge controller until this point here where we got a constant voltage and this is the absorb phase but of course that's really rather similar to the constant current and constant voltage method of charging lithium ion cells with two distinct differences. First of all the solar panel can't sustain a constant current like I mentioned whereas a lithium ion charger would that would be a straight line and also in the absorb stage usually on a lithium ion charger when it gets to about 5% or 10% here of the full charge it would cut off completely and the lead acid solar charge control isn't doing that it's allowing it to get all the way down to zero. Whether that will have an effect on my batteries whether that will damage them whether that will reduce their life 
who knows? Perhaps you'd like to comment. So there we are. A lead acid solar charge controller can be used to charge lithium ion cells and as long as you consider its uh, shortcomings and think about balancing the cells and that sort of thing it can be a reasonable replacement. Thank you to Billy Wizzy who pointed out that we can use the capacity controller as a balance uh, circuit as well and it seems to be doing quite a good job of that. I really would like to hear your comments on what you've seen in this video so if you can comment down below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you can. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.